he uh, talked of various important things wherein um, he accepted very firmly accepted uh, justifying um, monism that um, that the dualism of thought and uh, extension uh, is uh, resolved by taking uh, thought and extension as uh, the manifestations of one and the same reality since the ultimate uh, substance is nothing uh, other than the consciousness it is the substance which is in itself and conceived through itself and the most important take uh, during the course of uh, his last lecture is the idea of the infinite space that is the unmanifest through our experience of the finite space that is manifest he gave a very beautiful example of a triangle and any triangle whatsoever a finite triangle whatever properties that it carries are applicable to any infinite triangle say for instance the sum of three angles of a triangle equals to 180 degrees is as much true of an infinite triangle the way it is true of any finite triangle so by this example he tried to prove the unmanifest space or the infinite space through our experience of the finite space very nicely he has done that and also he talked of uh, a single substance in the philosophy of uh, uh, spinoza and he also talked of infinite attributes of um, that one and the same substance but of the various attributes that we have that that the substance has got we can only know two uh, uh, attributes namely the thought and extension because we are finite and, and 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 we can know only these two attributes then he also talked of uh, any sort of determination uh, of, of of the infinite will lead to um, uh, a sort of negation every determination is uh, 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 a negation so very nice uh, lecture it was and he also talked of uh, pantheism wherein he asserted that um, uh, uh, from the diversities of the world uh, we can see um, the, the unity behind uh, these diversities and from also from unity we can move to the diverse so the from both the ways from diversities of the world we can conceive of a unity and also we can think of this uh, there is a unity and from that unity all these diversities flow so he talked about natura naturata and natura naturans so 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 that's how that's the, this is the way that he presented his talk during the course of the last lecture very importantly uh, he talked he touched the different issues in the philosophy of spinoza now today uh, more, in more detailed um, um, manner he will be speaking on um, uh, substance attributes and modes with reference to the philosophy of spinoza over to professor pramod kumar das for his lecture welcome sir and um, uh, uh, start your lecture sir am i audible sir sir both audible and visible sir thank you <clears throat> the respected dr rao a very esteemed uh, participants of this session so as introduced by dr rao we had discussed monism and pantheism of spinozistic philosophy last class last session today we shall discuss substance attributes and modes in details the beauty of spinozistic philosophy is that spinoza started his philosophy from some principles and he took the help of geometry according to spinoza philosophy should be based upon such type of discussion which like descartes spinoza claims that must be self evident self evident 
as like mathematics as like geometry it is because except region except mathematical region or principle of uh, principles of geometry no other discipline can give us 100% guarantee 100% certainty about the truth suppose we rely on our experience sense experience that we call that is the scientific procedure that inquiry is the scientific inquiry that inquiry is the pragmatic inquiry that is very much practical that is common sense too but the problem is that the truth that is established on our experience that cannot be accepted as certain as mathematics and geometry therefore in science we deal with relative truth our experience is relative therefore the product of our experience the knowledge of our experience the conclusion of our experience is it bound to be relative so then what is the real meaning of scientific inquiry if science ends with probability and science begins with hypothesis then how can we say that my knowledge is scientific what is the credit of that inquiry science begins with hypothesis science ends with probability any conclusion of science is subject to revision the most established truth can be um, changed can be modified can be revised tomorrow therefore uh, the, the, the problem is at one hand we say that the that our inquiry is scientific we belong to the age of science but we can't give the certain knowledge or the self evident truth through the scientific procedure this is the problem that means taking the help of science and claiming our inquiry as scientific we cannot give a conclusive idea about this phenomenal world about anything so our knowledge about the phenomenal world through scientific procedure through inductive procedure through our observation experiment only ends with the probability therefore there are different views isms even contradictory views spoken by different philosophers philosophy is a view a philosopher gives his own view because he speculates the same phenomenal world from his own perspective so the speculation is also relative as experience is relative so the speculation is also relative because it is subject it is it is it is subjective it is the speculation of a philosopher however great philosopher he or she may be but it is the view of a philosopher so opinion views um philosophy of a, of a philosopher or a view a ism a theory philosophical theory that cannot be accepted as universal truth so opinion cannot be accepted as knowledge experience cannot be accepted as knowledge only reason is the source of knowledge 
because religion is self evident many many will criticize okay mathematics is self evident geometry is self evident so that is they are in mathematics and geometry how can you relate that with this empirical world what is the relation between geometry and the empirical world what is the relation between mathematics and this phenomenal world mathematics is beautiful in mathematics geometry is beautiful in geometry but how can you explain the empirical world through the principles of mathematics and geometry is it a rational attempt does it sound rational to relate mathematics with the physical world or the geometry with the physical world this is the question descartes said it is possible spinoza said it is possible leibniz said it is possible Descartes, Spinoza, and Leibniz, all these philosophers have related mathematics and geometry, and the mathematical principles and the geometrical principles with the phenomenal world. They have tried to explain the phenomenal phenomenal reality by the principles of geometry and mathematics. Descartes took the help of mathematics. and spinoza took the help of geometry as we are we were discussing in the last class that spinoza thought of space in a geometrical way how that the space is eternal for example space is eternal there is a complete space the total space is there in that total space triangle is a modification triangle is a modification circle is another modification square is another modification now we are discussing about the geometry not about the phenomenal world in a geometry there is a triangle there is a circle and there is square and there are other forms spinoza found the fact in such figures geometrical figures that in a small triangle there is space and in a big triangle there is space and outside the triangle there is also space in a small triangle there is space in a big triangle there is there is space in the biggest triangle there is there is space and outside the triangle there is the infinite space so space is there inside and outside the triangle first second the principles of eternity the principles of a triangle for example that the three um, angles of a triangle is equal to two right angles this principle is same in a in the smallest triangle and in the biggest triangle so the the principle of eternity that is common in all modifications of space maybe it is maybe uh, it is small triangle or a big triangle or biggest triangle what does it mean that means Space. We are not discussing about quantity of space. Whatever may be the quantity of space, whatever may be the area of a triangle, if it is a triangle, it must have this eternal principle that the three sides, 
and the sum total of the three angles is equal to two right angles. In that way, the modification of space bears the same principle of eternity with the infinite space. Because the space is there in every triangle. And the, and the triangle itself is a modification, is a form of the total space. So the total space is indeterminate, that is indeterminate, and this triangle is a determinate space. So triangle is a determinate space in the indeterminate space. Similarly, circle is a um, determinate, de determine, determinate space in the indeterminate space. Similarly, the square is a determinate space in the indeterminate space. And the outer and the inner space are one. So from this notion, we can now relate with the, the reality of the physical world that the, the, the world we perceive around us that these are the modifications. These are the modifications like triangle, square and a circle. So the modifications, they, 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 they bear the same essence of that one eternal principle that is substance. In this way Spinoza related geometry with philosophy that philosophically when we are trying to explain unity in diversity that there is only one principle which can explain the entire world of diversity. This explanation is through geometrical principle. It is not through inductive process because induction cannot give us any generalization without a inductive leap or inductive gap. And the presence of the inductive, inductive leap or that gap makes the inductive conclusion probable. So through the inductive process or through the scientific process or through the process of evolution, process of evolution, we cannot, cannot give a satisfactory explanation about the empirical world and its relation with the absolute reality that is one substance. So the relation between unity and diversity is explained through mathematics and geometry. So from the example of the, 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 from the example of a triangle in the infinite space, Spinoza explained the existence of a modes in the infinite substance. That the substance is the infinite that is infinite, that is independent, that is indeterminate and the mode, modes are determinate. In between the substance and the modes, in between the substance and the modes, there are attributes. Now the question is, all the modes or modifications, all the modifications or the phenomenal world that we perceive, is it the total manifestation of that substance? This is about empirical world. In a geometry, each triangle, the only manifestation of that infinite space, answer is no. There is a triangle, there is a possibility of a a circle, there is a possibility of a square. Similarly, there are many possible geometrical figures which occupy space. 
as the mod as the modification of space so these are the modifications of the infinite space so triangle is only one example that is only one example similarly the modifications that we see around us this plant this tree this mountain these human beings all these whatever we see around us the question is is it the final manifestation of that universe that 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 substance substance is one that is understood substance is one that is understood but when we are discussing about the world of diversity when we experience the um, uh, experience the mul multiplicity experience the manyness many things diversity around us the question is is it final manifestation of that one the answer is no this is not the final manifestation of that one this is only a possibility how now this model here we shall discuss the possibility of attributes that substance is one but substance has infinite numbers of attributes substance has infinite numbers of attributes out of which human mind human mind this is the limit of a man this is the limit of human knowledge human mind can know only two attributes so metaphysical perspective is different from epistemological perspective no epistemology can explain metaphysics there is some possibility through mathematics and geometry otherwise it is impossible because when we discuss metaphysics from epistemological perspective we have only one um, asset that is human mind human knowledge including science philosophy religion literature technology everything that is human creation so if we take all these instruments into the domain of epistemology taking the help of all these instruments of knowing we cannot explain the totality we can't explain metaphysics so metaphysics cannot be explained by physical epistemology because epistemology is physical so through this physical epistemology we can't explain metaphysics this is well understood by rationalist philosophers especially through spinoza spinoza understands spinoza very well understands that metaphysics is something higher that is infinite and that which is infinite cannot be understood by human finite intelligence human mind is finite because human mind can know only two attributes only two not three four five ten hundred But the attributes are infinite numbers. They are infinite attributes, innumerable attributes. Out of these innumerable attributes, human mind is so small. Human mind is so limited. It can know only two attributes: thought and extension. Thought and extension. These are only two attributes. Human mind can know. so this is the limit of epistemology if epistemology will claim to know metaphysics he can only speak up two attributes thought and extension then what is this empirical world now this empirical world is the modification of these two attributes which are known by human mind so is this is this empirical world physical world the final mind total manifestation of the infinite no 
because the modifications are modifications of attributes if the modifications are modifications of attributes and if these attributes are only two in number out of infinite attributes then these modi these modifications are not the total modification this manifestation is not the total manifestation that means our knowledge is the knowledge of the part manifest part manifestation part modification not the whole modification and that modification is the determinate modification that is the determinate modification of the indeterminate substance exactly the same thing is said in jaina system that if the elephant is the total reality you blind fellow you man having a very small mind that you are claiming that you are a scientist you are a philosopher you are a, a religious person uh, you are a man of literature but you have a very small mind and your mind is blind that it can know only the part of the elephant and the second crisis is knowing the part you are claiming the whole crisis in human knowledge is that we know the part but claim the whole knowing the part we claim the whole that this part is whole this is an epistemological error and human beings commit this error because man thinks that man all manage me because man is ignorant man is ignorant of his knowledge so the point is the manifestation the external world that we see around us a philosopher like spinoza is not satisfied with with this type of a modification because it's the modification of only two attributes everything is found as extended or thought there are two possibilities thought and extension we find the material things being extended and we 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 find certain ideas being thought of that means there are external objects and there are ideas of external objects two possibilities are there external objects are there and ideas of external objects are there so mind is there who thinks about the external object and the external object is there which is which is thought by mind suppose there were no mind only there were objects then there were there were there, there would be no discussion about objects discussions are there because there is human mind because there is thought because there is thinking substance thinking substance in decker thinking attribute in spinoza that means thinking is a possibility of that infinite substance and this is one possibility out of the infinite possibilities and extension is another possibility and that is one possibility of infinite possibilities so substance is one there is no problem substance is one there is no problem attributes are two there are only two attributes and the entire physical world is the modification of these two attributes this truth should be realized by a rational mind how ignorant we are if we are acquainted with only two attributes of the totality from this we can know the area of our ignorance that we are ignorant of 
the entire possibility of these subst infinite substance except to thought and extension. So, the area of our knowledge is very limited, that is thought and extension, but the area of our ignorance is much wider, because the, in that area there are all other attributes and modifications of the substance. If we shall discuss this way, then there will be a question. The question will take place. If this is the position of modes, that modes are only modes of two attributes, so that means that means the world the world where we live in, the world that we perceive each one of the possible worlds, one of the one of the infinite possible worlds. That means there are other possible worlds. There are other possible worlds because there are other attributes and their modifications. If man, if human mind is acquainted with only two attributes, then all other attributes and their modifications are there, but we don't know. Science now also proves that, that this earth is not the only earth or these nine planets are not the only planets, there are, there are maybe all, many other planets. So human knowledge is so limited that it cannot map, it cannot assess, it cannot know the noumena. Noumena means the totality, the total manifestation of the infinite substance. Exactly this was the position of Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna was satisfied with this empirical world, the world that was available for us, for, for him. Lord Krishna gave him the Divya Chakku that you take this special eye so that you can see the totalities. Therefore, he exposed the Vishwarupa and that Vishwarupa symbolizes the entire expression, entire manifestation of the totality, of the reality. That is the total manifestation. So the total manifestation is known to the divine mind. The partial manifestation is known to a human mind. Because the human mind is a modified mind. Human mind is a finite mind. So through that finite mind, the infinite substance can never be described, can never be defined through any language. Therefore it is said, all determinations are negations. Determination is negation. The more you determine, the more you determine the indeterminate, then it becomes determinate. The more we determine the indeterminate, the indeterminate becomes determinate. That means we cannot determine the indeterminate through our finite language, finite knowledge, finite mind. If we try to do so, then it will be the result of that uh, those five blind men who were trying to know the elephant. It is very well discussed in Jaina system that human knowledge is finite, whereas Reality is complex. Reality has complexity which cannot be grasped by human mind. Now the question is whether these modifications are real or unreal. 
whether this empirical world is real or unreal. Advaita Vedanta will say, Advaita Vedanta will say, Brahma Satya Jagat Mithya. So that infinite substance, which is one independent, that is only truth, and all these modifications are false because they are modifications. Being modified, they are false. Any modification cannot be true because it is modification. It is subject to change, number one. Number two, these modifications are the manifestation that is not the total manifestation of the infinite. In that sense also, these modes are, modes are um, not true. So this is the position of Advaita Vedanta, where it is claimed that only Brahman is truth and the Jagat is Mithya or the modifications are Mithya. Brahma Satya, Jagat Mithya. Brahma Satya and Jagat Mithya. That means only Brahman is truth. This world is the superimposition of that Brahman. So in that, in this way, in Advaita Vedanta, the status of the empirical world is explained our way. So uh, this is the demerit of Advaita Vedanta that he could not give a satisfactory explanation about the status of the empirical world and it was explained our way. In Vishishta Advaita Vada, it is said that this world is real this, because this world is the manifestation of uh, that one. And because of the manifestation, this world is real. But in Vishishta Dvaita Vada, the abstract Brahmanhood or the abstract entity was explained away. In Advaita Vedanta, the world of diversity was explained away. In Vishishta Dvaita Vada, the abstract reality, the entity, the Brahman, the ultimate reality is explained away. But, it, but in Spinozistic philosophy, both the unity and diversity, both the substance and modifications are beautifully explained. Therefore, Spinoza, Spinoza, Spinozistic philosophy is known as abstract monism as well as pantheism. Unity can be explained without diversity. Diversities can be explained with unity. Both can be explained by each other and both are real. The unity is real and the diversity is also real. So far as abstract monism is concerned, modes are unreal. So far as the pantheism is concerned, modes are real. So now the question is, how can we give the status of reality and unreality Two modes. Brahman is real, that's all right. Brahman is real and attributes are real, there is no problem. But when we are discussing about modes, we are claiming from one perspective that it is real and from another perspective it is unreal. From Vibhartavada, these modifications are unreal. From Parinambada, the modifications are real. From abstract monism, the modifications are unreal and from pantheism, the modifications are real. How? How modes can be said to be both real and unreal? This appears to be contradictory. We can't simply say that it is because of abstract monism and that is because of pantheism. No, why should a philosopher believe in two contradictory views, abstract monism and pantheism. Because he is believing in abstract monism, he is claiming that modes are unreal. Because he is believing, believe, because he is believing in pantheism, he is claiming that modes are real. The question is why? Why did Spinoza believe in both abstract monism and pantheism? 
and why did spinoza claims that the modes are both real and unreal so this is explained by the discussion of epistemology and metaphysics from the perspective of epistemology when the last class i had told metaphysics is metaphysics whether it is known to it is known by any science philosophy or religion or not that does not matter metaphysics is metaphysics when we try to understand metaphysics through epistemology we take the help of a human mind and so far as the human mind is concerned human mind cannot grasp cannot understand cannot realize anything without the formats of human mind without the formats of human mind immanuel kant will beautifully said that the phenomenal world is only known to human mind through the space and time and 12 categories of understanding because these are the formats of human knowledge we cannot know anything without these formats so whenever we are talking about epistemology epistemology has its format and with that format of epistemology we cannot understand the infinite metaphysics whatever may be the epistemology whatever may be the varied source of knowledge it may be perception it may be inference it may be verbal testimony it may be comparison whatever may be the um, origin origin rational philosophers say there is some possibility in origin because origin can give a satisfactory explanation about this negotiation uh, between the empirical world and the metaphysical world this is an attempt but human perception human inference comparison human um, the use of language through that we cannot understand the metaphysics when spinoza is speaking about the geometry and the empirical world spinoza is giving a comparison that is a comparison if this is this happens in geometry that in geometry we can we can understand the relation between the infinite space and the modified space infinite space and the modification of space like triangle uh, circle and square so from this spinoza is making a comparison that there is a substance there is an infinite substance and the this world is the modification of that substance and they take the same essence from this from the epistemological perspective when man is trying to determine the indeterminate determine the indeterminate through the determinate modes through the determinate modes it is quite impossible and in that sense modes are unreal first we shall discuss how modes are real modes are real because modes modes or every modification carries the same essence of the infinite substance as the triangle carries the same um, eternity as the infinite space so the substance attributes and the modes these are same from the um, from the um, transcendental perspective from the metaphysical perspective substance attributes and the modes all these are same in essence but from the epistemological perspective when man tries to know the substance through modes then it is impossible because it will become determinate so by human knowledge the indeterminate becomes determinate so man man makes the modes finite 
modes are not finite modes are modes are the real expressions of that infinite substance because because if modes modes will be called finite then there will be dualism there will be pluralism what does what is the meaning of monism monism means the entire universe entire reality is one if the scheme is one if the reality is one there cannot be a second reality so modes being finite cannot stand as a second reality to the infinite reality then there will be dualism infinite reality is one then modes are another type of reality so there are two types of realities therefore there is dualism no from the perspective of monism from the perspective of monism oneness oneness of everything there is no distinction between substance attributes and modes that is one in that sense is a b mode takes the essence of or bears the essence of the infinite as the drop of uh, water of the ocean takes the essence of the the entire ocean in one drop of a blood of our body takes that essence of the entire quantity of our blood in our body similarly the smallest atom takes the same essence of the whole matter similarly the every mode takes the same essence of the infinite substance because there cannot be a second reality as finite to the infinite in that sense reality is one but how modes are unreal modes are unreal because when we take the unreality as reality but these are the modifications we have to understand that this modification is a part modification it is a part manifestation it is not the total modification or total manifestation because of our ignorance we take the part as the whole as the um, in case of the elephant the leg was taken as the elephant the belly was taken as the elephant similarly a more cannot be taken as the total infinite reality so from the epistemological point of view the modes are unreal so substance is one substance has infinite numbers of attributes out of infinite numbers of attributes only two attributes are known to human mind and the entire external world the phenomenal world that we perceive that is the modification of only these two attributes that means we are living in one possible world this world is not the total world this is only one possible world but what is the problem what is our ignorance our ignorance is that we take this possibility as the total possibility we take this part as the total part in that sense this one possibility is unreal but from the standpoint of essence whatever is there in the totality whatever is there in the totality that is also here in this particular modification in that sense the modes are not different from the substance why modes are unreal the definition of modes is that that anything that can exist anything that that can only exist taking the help of others what is the some definition of substance substance is self existent substance does not depend upon anything for its existence and for its conception it can exist by itself and it can be conceived by itself this is the status of substance 
just a physics axis of a Morse that Morse can't exist by itself and can't conceive by it can't be conceived by itself. Morse are Morse exist through substance and Morse are conceived through substance. I am giving an example. Without space, no triangle is possible. But without a triangle, space is possible. Without the infinite, no finite is possible. But without the finite mode, the infinite mode is possible. In that sense, modes are finite and substance is infinite. But in the essence, whatever that, whatever there is in the big triangle, that is also a small triangle. Similarly, whatever there is in the uh, in, it, one infinite substance, that essence is also found in a, in any modification. In that sense, it is real. So, from these two perspectives, from the epistemological perspective, modes are unreal. From the metaphysical perspective, from the transcendental perspective, modes are real. Because if modes are not real, then that we cannot establish monism. Because modes will stand as the counterpart of that uh, one infinite principle. There is no second reality. Reality is one. So modes cannot stand as the second reality to the one substance. So from the transcendental point of view, substance, attributes and modes are one. But from the Beharika Sattva, from the tactical perspective, from the human perspective, from so far as human knowledge is concerned, man is bound to confront with modifications because man cannot see the infinite uh, substance without modifications. So when human knowledge begins to speculate about one or to know about one that begins through the modifications but ignorance man takes the modifications as the totality that is real which can exist by itself and which can be conceived by itself that is only substance that is one substance and that one substance is equal to its infinite attributes and each every modification of each and every attribute. So the sum total of modifications, the sum total of attributes are equal to that one substance. Out of this infinite possibility, we live in a such a world that is only one possibility of the infinite possibility. What we claim that we know all that we know the totality, that we are scientists, we are philosophers, we are great wise persons, that we know everything. If you say you know everything, it is your ignorance. So, so we should know area of our ignorance. So this is the, so this is the difference between Spinoza and Adeva Vedanta. Spinoza made human beings or human mind finite. That mind is finite. Mind can know only two attributes of the substance. Sankara differs from this view. Sankara says that human mind is not finite. Human mind has, human mind is only a layer of consciousness. Human mind is such a layer of consciousness which is with the dialectics of a subject and a predicate, which deals with the rules of logic and mind is satisfied with that. But there are higher levels of mind, higher levels of consciousness where that infinite substance, that totality can be grasped, can be grasped by the human mind. Human mind means the higher level of human mind. So Aurobindo beautifully said there are different types of mind. Over mind, uh, higher mind, illumined mind, intuitive mind, super mind. There are different types of mind. 
they are different layers of consciousness. But Western philosophers, both rationalist philosophers and empiricist philosophers, they have not given this status to mind. That mind is finite and God is infinite. Mind can never know God. Because mind, whenever mind tries to know, mind knows through the formats of mind. And these two formats are thought and extension. Beyond thought and extension, other possibilities will remain unknown to human mind. This is the common claim of Western philosophers, including Immanuel Kant. Hegel, Hegel somehow differs from this view. So, substance, attributes and modes, these three taken together completely explain the manifest and unmanifest. Both the manifest and unmanifest can be explained by these three schemes. One scheme is substance, the other scheme is attribute, and the other scheme is modifications. But the point is that through these schemes, the entire manifestation is there, is there. Is there means it is metaphysics. But it cannot be known to the human mind. This is epistemology. I am repeating, this is the conclusion, substance has infinite attributes, each attribute has modifications, so infinite attributes has infinite modifications, so the entire scheme is there, one substance is there, infinite attributes are there, and infinite modifications are there. Is there? This is metaphysics. This is metaphysics because it is not known by physics. Whatever is not known by physics, that is metaphysics. It is there. But the physical science or the human mind is able to know only the part of this part of this manifestation is epistemology. So there is a gap between epistemology and reality. Epistemology cannot give, cannot explain the reality as such, therefore it ends in relativity. Therefore science is not the complete knowledge. Science ends with relativity because being very much a scientific epistemology, it cannot assess the metaphysics. Metaphysics still remains unknown and unknowable. So any attempt of epistemology, any epistemological attempt cannot give a complete metaphysical assessment. Metaphysics remains metaphysics. The problem is that because it is not assessed to our epistemology, many philosophers claim that metaphysics is nonsense. Metaphysics does not exist because it is not assessed through our epistemology. And other philosophers claim whether you know or you don't know, that is your problem. You can't know because you are a human being. You are satisfied with your format. You are conditioned by your format. You know or you don't know, metaphysics is metaphysics. So these are the two claims. Implicit philosophers claim metaphysics is nonsense because it is not known through epistemology. Rationalist philosophers claim epistemology cannot explain the metaphysics. So metaphysics is metaphysics. And Spinoza explained this in a very beautiful way speaking about only two knowable attributes, two knowable attributes. That means there are many infinite numbers of unknowable attributes and therefore unknowable modifications. 
there are infinite numbers of unknowable possibilities of the world. This world where we live is only one possibility. And in that possibility, we claim that we are all great human beings. This is the scheme of substance, attributes and modes. From the metaphysical point of view, that is one. From the epistemological point of view, they are, they are, they are different. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, um, Professor uh, uh, Das, for uh, your um, uh, very um, beautiful lecture. Uh, well, this lecture um, doesn't require any synopsis because towards the end, Professor Das has very beautifully uh, synopsized his talk. But one, two uh, things um, need uh, due consideration and uh, should be um, should be learnt by all. That he said that. Um, in the lines of um, Spinoza, um, who believes in both pantheism and also uh, he is an uh, abstract uh, monist. So there seems a possible contradiction and um, Professor Das very beautifully tried to um, uh, get rid of this contradiction by saying when, whenever there is a talk of um, pantheism, we do talk of um, the attributes and the modes uh, as being uh, real. Because uh, in the pantheistic sense, um, Spinoza speaks of um, uh, 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 that uh, everything is um, um, God is everything and everything is God, or substance is everything and everything is substance. So, in that sense, uh, the modes become real, say the substance being in the modes and the modes being in the substance. So, both the ways transition is possible, so the modes are real. But when there is a talk of abstract monism, uh, uh, their um, modes turn to be unreal or the attributes do turn to be unreal because attributes, modes and substance are, uh, they cannot exist without the substance and there is only one substance uh, that, is, uh, uh, that, is, that is truly uh, real and, um, and very beautifully um, he has tried to um, assert that uh, when, we, when there is a talk of abstract monism, there is only one reality that is a substance. So very nicely done, but uh, one problem did turn up in, in my mind when maybe uh, maybe in asserting you made a, a reversal, I don't know. From the perspective of epistemology, well, um, the finite minds do uh, conceive of modes as real, as my understanding goes. Well, I don't know what, what you wanted to say, but from the perspective of metaphysics, uh, or the transcendental standpoint, most are unreal because there, in the transcendental level, everything resolves into oneness. Is it so? Is it, is it that or do you differ? From the epistemological point of view, modes are real. And from the metaphysical standpoint, modes are unreal. Well, during assertion, I thought some sort of reversal was there. I don't know whether, how do you take this? Please, can you uh, clarify this? Then we can move ahead with the questions. Professor Das, are you there? Well, well, there was some connectivity issue. We have lost connection with um, Professor Das because you no, know, he is not here in the list. Some connectivity issue. Just he has joined just now. Well. Well, Professor Das, able to hear now? Well, the connecti connectivity was lost. Hello, hello. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now back. Are you able to hear me? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Did, you, did, you, did you listen to what I said or should I repeat? Sir, please repeat, sir. Uh, actually, it was a very beautiful lecture. Well, I am not repeating the entire thing because people have um, already um, listened to what I have said. But one thing that um, uh, that 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 uh, um, is a poser for you, um, as you said, um, well, uh, I don't know whether I have taken that right or not. But to, as far as my understanding goes, that from the perspective of epistemology uh, for the human mind, 
uh, modes are real as you see and from the perspective of metaphysics modes are unreal because in a transcendental level everything uh, resolves into one substance is it so or do you find any difference in that how do you say this no no there is that there is a difference sir no no that's that's what there i want there is a difference um, in advaita vedanta it is said like that that from the metaphysical point of view the brahman is only real and jagat is mithya now we simply say in spinozistic philosophy that metaphysics is metaphysics that is that the modes are the modes bear the same essence of the substance so modes cannot stand as the second reality to one substance can 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 sir voice is breaking voice is breaking some connectivity issue let us wait for a while yes till the time professor das returns well what he wanted to say is since the same essence continues to flow in both the finite and the infinite what professor das intends to say is that the modes are real from a metaphysical standpoint because the same essence flows in the finite and the infinite till the time professor yes yes john yes john yes come back sir welcome yes you are audible now Yes, sir. Now, now it is clear. Well, it's done. Yes, well, well, you are, you, are, you are very much clear on that point. There are no issue, but still, but still, um, uh, what Professor Das intends to say is, um, from the epistemological uh, point of view, modes are unreal because we do think of modes only with reference to two attributes. Okay, so. but as professor das said there are infinite attributes which the finite mind can never know what we can know is only two attributes and the various modifications based on these two attributes that we do know so by confusing these modes to be the totality of all modes is something misleading and in that sense modes are unreal because there are infinite possibilities we can know, know only uh, two possibilities arising out of two attributes so that's what uh, professor das says yes 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 yes
thank you thank you for the clarification thanks very nicely done and this uh, this elephant example from the jenny system substantiates your thought your expression the philosophy of spinoza well well we have very beautiful questions here in the chat box well i'll take uh, the question by uh, sravani mishra well she uh, has, she has uh, written twice but these two can be uh, clubbed into one pojar uh, something uh, like this so he says um, in the practical world in the empirical world um, the finite man um, encounters with uh, the attributes of um, uh, thought and extension and as you said there are infinite attributes which the finite mind can never encounter we do encounter with only with the thought and extension so there is a need on the part of the individual men the finite men to transcend more and more from the empirical sensibilities so that one can discover the oneness the unmanifest that spinoza is talking about the substance so how do you say this sabani madam asked a very beautiful question and she she always uh, acts uh, very pertinent questions and yes this is this is our hope that our mind should transform from the um, lower perfection to the higher perfection uh, but but this is the problem with western philosophers they they uh, don't give that status of transformation to mind so that is well explained in our indian tradition that as i had told that mind is only a layer of consciousness and there are many layers of consciousness many possible uh, mind that this mind can grasp the brahman can grasp the whole reality so what madam said i agree with her yes yes and yes. And, and, and that is education that is education we are getting educated every day what we we are in our childhood today we are transformed we we have been transformed and we shall know the totality through this mind and this mind is a very this mind is very powerful in indian context but in western context mind is only an instrument of knowing and it is conditioned to the conditioned to the formats of knowing as immanuel kant said categories of understanding spinoza is saying that thought and extension so by that way westerners uh, uh, have limited human minds the only exception exception is hegel hegel uh, I, i shall discuss hegel later on uh, but many western philosophers have uh, um, limited human minds that 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 so the reality the noumen remains unknown and unknowable i am sp- i am telling only two sentences in western philosophy noumen or the reality remains unknown and unknowable in indian philosophy the noumen or the reality is knowable is realizable okay this is the difference we can know we can realize brahman brahma bit brahma bhavati but in western philosophy phenomena is knowable and noumen is unknowable this is the difference between indian and western thank you <clears throat> thank you uh, very much sir for your uh, response and i should thank uh, sravani madam for uh, her beautiful question because she talked of uh, the transcendence from uh, the knowable and the known uh, from the from from the known to uh, the area of the knowable Uh, with uh, the expansion of mind or say with the expansion or the transcendence of mind to know the higher to reach the substance so it's a beautiful um, gesture to uh, transcend um, higher and higher to um, to comprehend the other attributes that uh, human mind in the normal sense uh, cannot know and comprehend so very nice um, uh, question i should say well uh, it's uh, taking uh, the same thread um, we move to uh, Tanushree um, 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 from Renancha University. She has a very be- another beautiful question again. Uh, she says, uh, "Well, the human mind can know only uh, the true attributes of thought and extension, 
Now she says, um, are these attributes, are the manifestations, say in the form of moods, say um, in the moods, so weak that the human mind is not able to comprehend um, the other attributes of uh, the substance. I hope uh, you got my point, sir. So as you said that the, the substance has infinite attributes, the human mind can comprehend or know only the two attributes of thought and extension expressed in the various modifications out there in the world. Now, the her question is, are these attributes of God so weak that they cannot imply or they cannot um, uh, 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 imply, say, other attributes of God? Maybe it's, it's the finiteness of man, um, of man that, that cannot go beyond to know the other attributes. Well, uh, taking the poser from Srabani Madam, uh, I request uh, Professor Das to respond. Ha, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very beautiful question. Um, but we, can, uh, we should understand that uh, no attribute is weak <laughs> because attributes, attributes constitute the essence of the substance. So, being the essence of substance, no attribute can be weak, can be finite. Attributes are also infinite. There are infinite, at infinite uh, numbers of infinite attributes, not finite attributes. Attribute is infinite in nature and attributes are as real as the substance. So, attributes cannot be weak, number one. S second thing is, that there are infinite numbers of uh, infinite attributes, good attributes, active attributes, powerful attributes, but human mind is so weak. Attributes are not weak. Human mind is so weak that this is a mockery to human mind that man is claiming that I am so rational, I am scientist, rationalist, etc., etc. But that mind is so weak it can know only two attributes of the infinite attributes. So, attributes are not weak. Attributes are the representatives of the God. But the human mind is so weak that it cannot know. Achha, this is about philosophy. This is about, this is about Spinoza's philosophy. I shall give you a very common example. Can we know all the qualities of our relatives even wife can know all the my qualities of husband or husband can know all the qualities. No, never. It is quite impossible to know all the aspects of one thing. It is very beautifully said in Jaina system. That one, that is called Satvado. Perhaps it may be, perhaps it may be, perhaps it may be. Even you don't know all the qualities of your best friends. So how can you know all the qualities of substance? So, human mind, is, human mind is weak, weak in the sense limited, finite. So, that finite mind can't grasp the infinite. This is natural. But what is the tragedy? What is the crisis? Man does not admit this. Man admits the reverse. Man says, I know everything. I know the totality. So, knowing the part, man claims the totality. Therefore, in a Jaina system, they are called blind seekers, blind men. So man is blind in that sense. Thank you. Attributes are not weak. <clears throat> thank you. Um, thank you, sir, uh, for your response. Since the substance um, is of an infinite nature, how can the attributes be weak? So the attributes do also are infinitely strong, I should say. They are never weak. It is only the human mind that is weak and in the human way of knowing and understanding these two attributes of thought and extension are known in a finite way. But attributes as they are, are the attributes of the substance that are infinitely strong but only could be known in a finite way. Number one. Number two, there are other attributes, maybe, maybe, maybe I say, apart from thought and extension, which a finite human mind can never comprehend. So there lies the weakness, the finiteness, the limitedness in the human mind 
and there is no weakness in the attributes as they are of the substance. So thank you for the beautiful question and thanks Professor Das for a beautiful response. Well, I don't see any other question in the chat box. Well, it's a uh, it's a it's a um, it's a compliment um, by Sramani Mr. Madam for uh, um, the beautiful exposition of the entire uh, uh, scheme of thought uh, on substance attributes and modes. Well, it was really a beautiful lecture with a lot of clarity and understanding, and the questions were also taken in a right note and beautifully answered. So I should thank the speaker for this and also. Thank the cushion set, uh, cushion raisers for raising such beautiful cushions, and this shows the clarity in expression from the from from the speaker. They have the the thoughts have really touched the audience, and that's why the beautiful cushions have flown in. Thank you very much. Now let us move to uh, well, there are no cushions, um, so let us move to uh, Swarna Tri uh, Tripathi Madam for proposing a final vote. Pranam to everybody. Today, Pramod sir delivered a talk on substance, attributes and modes. The world of diversity and unity behind the diversity are completely explained by substance, attributes and modes. Dr. K. Om Narendra sir watered the session and gave a beautiful syn synopsis of the talk. We salute his patient's coordination with us in all respects. We are grateful to him for his great contribution for the academic pursuit. We thank all the participants for participating in the discussion. Their presence is our inspiration. We shall meet again tomorrow with our Sunday program in Philosophy Family. Thank you all. Pranam. Well, uh, I also thank um, Swarna Tripathi Madam for um, keeping this webinar series alive and taking all pain for the success of this webinar series. So, thanking all, may I close, uh, may I declare this meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night.